it's Sarah from Drone Minds. Here are some top tips from industry specialists on what you might consider when becoming a professional drone operator. We tend to find that certain pilots need certain platforms. So you may look at the DJI Inspire 1 system here. That might not be the first platform to look for. With the Phantom 3 4K version over there, that's a great introductory platform. You want to get into the market, you want to get in the air quickly, cost effectively, that's the best platform to go initially. As your market grows, when there's a trickle, there's a flood, more jobs come in. You want to improve on the video quality and the content that you're providing and then look towards the DJI Inspire one. This system goes to the next level, two-man operation, improved camera system, higher flight capacity and also the ability to fly in higher winds. The Free Fly Alta system, this is the end user. So if you're looking for a camera system or if you're looking for technology that's going to provide the very best in video reproduction, the very best in still footage and also the ability to shoot either upwards or downwards, we'd recommend the Free Fly Alter. For any businessman or for any person wanting to set this up as a way of making money, we'd always recommend more than one platform. If you set yourself up with one platform and that platform fails, you're setting yourself up for a fall. So we always recommend a small platform as a fallback principle, a larger platform as your main rig. We've seen a lot of drone companies sign up and we have seen them start to offer more and more services. And I think that's the thing, you know, you, you're, you're, the data that you get out is only as good as the, the, the data that you put in or the quality of the data and the quality of the equipment. So, you know, you do need a, a good quality sensor and you need a good quality airframe. And, you know, as the flights are getting longer, you know, we're seeing bigger areas, you know, as the, the um, legislation changes over the next three years, you know, we're going to see beyond visual line of sight. Um, we're going to see drones going further. We're going to see drones potentially flying a little bit higher as well. So, you know, because there are already people who've got permission to fly up to 600 feet. Um, but we, we're seeing it evolve and the market's evolving and I think there are, a lot of, there are a lot of end users of the data who've kind of been sold, oh we'll do a drone inspection for you and they've literally, they've gone out and they've, you know, they've been told that they can have great accuracy and they can do it with this and they can do it for 300 quid and there's a really big difference between you know, the quality that you get from, you know, when you use somebody like a professional surveyor who has actually been doing this stuff with ground-based equipment for a long time, they understand the market and they understand what the client's looking for and you get you, you just get a much better service. So, you know, it's great that there, there are things like the Phantom coming to market, you know, that are on the market that get people interested in this, that give people an understand or a better understanding of what they can do. And it's nice to see people coming to a show like this and then seeing the, the other equipment that's on the market that can give them extra capability and capacity and it, it does it it means that they can offer um, a more diverse range of services. LiDAR data is much uh, lighter than uh, photogrammetry data so basically if you if it takes them like three days to process uh, photogrammetry data with LiDAR it would only take you like maybe half a day it's really really easy uh, to, to process with the right software and so on, you, you won't have any any problem. So, if you want to be a successful uh, UAV uh, service um, company, and you want to tell people, yeah, I've got this amazing system that can actually see through vegetation and that can map whatever uh, whatever is under this vegetation, then well, you have you have to use lidar. It's very important that operators go through the relevant training courses and get qualified obviously to do this have their CA commissions and do commercial work but during the period when they've done their theory test and doing their fly test it, it, at the moment it is not compulsory for them to go and do fly training we would encourage all operators to go and do some flight training with a qualified operating school because it would in the long run reduce the chances of a claim a lot of people who don't go and do that type of training will then have a claim early on in their sort of commercial careers as such um, leading to sort of premiums increasing. If these people were to go and do some actual flight training, it would reduce the risk of claims going forward and therefore, ideally, premiums would come down and it would be a lot more accessible to a wider market, basically. If you want to join the industry, 
as a professional, you need to do the regulatory things. You need to get the training. You need to get your permission, your your permission for aerial work, etc., etc. And then you could go off and you could be quite isolated and work and get contracts in your local area um, with surveyors and whatever, and and be quite happy. But you'll get far more out of the industry if you know you get your training through a professional body. A, a, reputable body, you join the industry, you join the forums, you join the trade association, get involved in the discussions, get involved in the consultations on airspace changes, get involved in all the things that are happening in the industry, you'll get more out of it. So you, it's like anything else, you know, you can join a golf club and turn up on an afternoon and go around and play on your own. Or you can get involved in the competitions and the clubhouse and the organisation and discussion about course changes and what's happening around your golf club. The same in the unmanned industry. You can get involved in the industry, you can become a member, become an active member. The more you put in, the more you will personally get out of it. The contacts you get, etc, 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 are just so rewarding. Having the right flying skills I think is very important. Uh, we did feel that some of the schools that you talked to could offer perhaps too easy a course and we've had some of those come to us to actually do more more training because they weren't although they're legally qualified they didn't have enough confidence to actually go out there and deliver the work themselves I mean, one example as an analogy would be if somebody's done the ground school and done the flight test and got through it too easily um, and they bought, for sake of argument, a £30,000 drone and they're being asked to photograph a £1 million stained glass window in some cathedral from the outside. Have you got the confidence or the balls to put your machine next to that glass window and know the two won't connect? <laughs> so it's a case of, well, have I got the right skill set to be confident in doing what I'm doing? So you wouldn't put a new learner driver in a Formula One racing car and expect him to keep up with, um, you know, one of the... One of the uh, famous drivers so it's about getting the right machine the right training be confident at it understand your equipment um, if you're not sure ask you know there's no shame in um, finding people to talk to that can help you there's a lot to understand about ancillary stuff charging lipo batteries is um, a whole new world they can explode they can be dangerous you need to understand them um, a little bit of knowledge about props and motors and what happens if things go wrong, mitigating circumstances, all this sort of thing. We can help people understand that, have the confidence and uh, hopefully give drones a better name than they seem to have at the moment.